Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's been three weeks since we had a clear night here in Sirencester where I was actually able to get outside and set the telescope up. But tonight, fingers crossed, it's looking clear all night long. So I just thought I'd take you into the computer and show you how I select the target that I'm actually going to be imaging. Okay, so this is the website that I use. It's called Telescopius, and it's a brilliant resource to show you what's gonna be high in your location and then help you frame that target. So I also use an app on my phone called Sky Guide. So what I'll usually do is select a target um, from this website, and then I'll go outside and use the app to, to make sure that it's going to be visible in my location. So the app Sky Guide has a really handy augmented reality feature, which uses the camera on your phone um, to show you where it's going to be, where the target's going to be in relation to your garden. So it will show you whether it's going to clear your house or your neighbor's tree, etc. So I would definitely recommend downloading that app as well. But this website, if you click on targets at the top, click on deep sky, it will show you a list of targets that are high in the night sky in your area. So as you can see, the Elephant's Trunk Nebula in Cepheus gets high around 10 o'clock and will be high for most of the night. And you can scroll down through this list and pick out one that's going to be nice and high, nice and visible all night long. Now you can put in some search parameters so you can put in when you want it to be visible from. You can put in how high in the night sky that you want it to, to actually get, how high above the horizon. You can tick off uh, different um, object types, so different types of nebulas, galaxy, um, supernova, remnants, etc. But if you scroll down here, you can see that the target that I'm going to be shooting tonight is the Veil Nebula or the Cygnus Loop um, in obviously the constellation Cygnus. And you can see here that it gets high when it gets dark around 10, 11 o'clock, and it will be high for most of the night. Um, until it starts to get brighter in the morning. So a perfect target for me to actually photograph this time of year. So that's how I go about selecting the target. Once I've selected that target, I then go over to the toolbox and click on telescope simulator just to see how it's going to look in my field of view. So here you can see down the side all of the information you need to put in. So this is the size of your sensor. So this is the sensor size for the 2600 camera that I have. You then can go up and put in the focal length of your telescope. So I'm gonna change it to 400 because I'm shooting with the Ascar 400 at the moment. I don't really need to change the aperture. Um, and then you can come down here and choose your target. So I'm gonna change it from Andromeda to the Veil Nebula. There you go. And as soon as you do that, you can see what it's going to look like in your field of view. So you can see if I rotate the camera well enough, I should be able to fit the majority of the Veil Nebula in the frame. I might cut off a little bit in the top and bottom. You can actually rotate the, um, the field of view here. If you go in back into the camera settings and then you go to the rotation, you can see that you can rotate to simulate the camera rotation. So if I go all the way around, if I rotate my camera to something like this outside, I should be able to fit the vast majority of the Veil Nebula in the frame at, um, at 400 millimeters. Don't have anything wider at the moment, so I'm gonna to have to stick with 400 millimeters. So I'm gonna to have to be really careful framing this target up tonight, but hopefully I can do that. So this is an, an excellent resource that I would highly recommend if you haven't used it already. Um, like I said, I do use a, an app as well on my phone. Um, I will check out other resources online. So I'll look at different social media channels, um, Astrobin, I'll look at Facebook and Instagram, et cetera, et cetera, to see what other people are shooting as well. But the list of targets in uh, Telescopius is, is excellent. So I definitely recommend checking this out. So now all I need to do is head outside, set the telescope and the mount up, and then I'll show you the gear that I'm going to be using tonight to capture the Veil Nebula. Okay. 
Okay, so as you can see, I'm all set up, ready to image tonight. And I've set up slightly further down the garden on my trusty uh, wooden planks. Um, and that's because the Vail Nebula, if I set up where I normally do on the patio, it would go just behind the top of my house. So I'd lose it for about half an hour or so. And that's where that app I mentioned earlier, Sky Guide, really comes in handy. Using the augmented reality, I could see that if I stood where I was at the, at the bottom of the garden, I wouldn't be able to see it all night long. So I've got the planks back out. I'm halfway down the garden and hopefully I can collect images on this target all night long. So I am shooting with the ASI 2600 Mono. Um, I'm going to be shooting with the O3 and the HA filters tonight. So I'm going to do it in a um, HOO palette. Um, I'm going to go, I'm shooting with the Ascar 400 millimeter. Um, this setup I've been using the past couple of weeks and I'm absolutely loving it so far. The telescope's absolutely fantastic. It's really sharp, uh, produces really round, sharp stars all the way across the edge, right in the corners as well. So it's absolutely brilliant. Um, as always, I'm controlling the setup with the ASI Air Pro. I have the 120 mini guide camera on top with the 30 mil guide scope and it sat on the NEQ6 Pro. So that's my setup tonight. Now all I need to do is come back out here about half past 10, polar align the mount um, and start collecting some images. Okay, so I'm just going through the polar alignment now, which is really easy with the ASI Air. Um, it's got it, the polar alignment built in, which is great. But anyone who has the NEQ6 Pro, I'd highly recommend upgrading the um, Alt-As adjustment screws because the ones that come with it are absolutely terrible. They just, um, they're just really fiddly, they're really small. Um, they, they just don't make um, the fine adjustments that you need. So if any of you uh, have this mount, I'd definitely recommend upgrading it. It is probably the best 30, 40, 50 pounds that you, you'll spend on the mount. Okay, so that's me polar aligned, nice and easy, like I said with the ASI Air, took three minutes, 11 seconds. Um, so I'm really happy with that. Now I just need to slew to my target and then uh, start collecting some images. Okay, so I'm set up and I am collecting images. I'm just waiting for my first sub exposure to, to come in and I'll put that up on screen when it does. Um, but I think I framed the target quite nicely. Now the Veil Nebula is an absolutely massive target. It's about 100 light years across, maybe, maybe a little bit more in the constellation Cygnus. Um, and it's a huge, huge target caused by a massive supernova. Um, so a star that exploded about 10,000 to 20,000 uh, years ago. So um, it is a challenge to, to, to shoot at 400 millimeters. I would ideally um, go slightly wider than that, but this is what, so this is the widest focal length I've got. So I'm having to make do. So I'm, sh I'm shooting five minute sub exposures and I don't want to push beyond that because um, there are a huge amount of stars in this region. I don't want the image to be dominated by those stars. I want that nebula to pop. Um, so I thought by limiting the exposures a little bit, I might be able to bring out more of the detail in the nebula um, and not have the, the stars overshadow the image. Maybe it's the right decision. I'm not quite sure, but I thought I'd give it a go. I'm trying to collect about two hours each on the HA and the O3 filter tonight. It, I'm not going to get another clear night for, for until the weekend, so another two nights now. So I just want to have something to put out and show you an image. As you can hear, it's quite windy, so I, I think a few of those um, sub-exposures might be ruined by the wind. But um, I wanted to show you something. It's probably a, an, an image that I will carry on working on 
um, over the next few few days. So what you see might not be the final image, um, but I thought I would put a video out and an image out to show you anyway. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Please do like the, uh, the video, hit that like button. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and I'll put the image up now and I will see you in the next video.